For years now, apps like Substance Painter, 3D Code and Mari have rubbed in our faces how easily you can create amazing 3D textures. To achieve these textures, they use shading tricks with cool sounding names such as curvature, curvature maps, edge masking, edge masking and, and even ambient, ambient, ambient occlusion. occlusion. What if I told you that you can get all of this inside of Blender? Let's dive into these techniques so you can take your shading skills to the next level. We're going to start this off by creating a new material for this great object here. Hi Sin. I don't have this model and I can't follow along. Now, don't worry, you can download it for free from my Patreon. Just use the link in the description down below. Okay, so like I said, let's create a new material and give it a appropriate name. We're going to start by creating the base color for this object. I want this to have two colors, so I'm going to use a mix RGB node and set the top color here to a yellow orangish tint. For the bottom color, I'm going to use a bluish gray color. Now take our mix RGB node and plug it into the base color of the principal PSDF. The node now mixes the two Two colors together and that's why it currently looks like a mess. Instead I want to provide some sort of mask and plug that into the effector. We can do this by taking a gradient texture and a color ramp. Before we continue I want you to make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled. So go to preferences add-ons and look up the node wrangler add-on and make sure you've got it enabled. Done? Good. Let's continue. Plug the gradient texture into the color ramp and select the texture node and hit Ctrl T. This will add a mapping and texture coordinate node which we can use to control the gradient. Now Ctrl Shift click on the color ramp node and this will create a preview of the output this node is providing. Since we can now see our gradient, let's tweak it. Set the ramp to constant instead of linear and move the white color stop. The gradient is there but we need to rotate it so it matches our object properly. And this is where our mapping node comes in clutch. Change the rotate Y value to 90 degrees and immediately our gradient disappears. We can get it back by moving it around using the location values. In this case we'll need to take the x value and take it into the negative. Align it as best as possible with the part that separates the top and bottom half of the crate. Awesome. Now let's take the ramp and plug it into the factor of our mix RGB node. Re-enable the principled BSDF by control shift clicking on that and voila we now have a perfect split between our two colors. Next Let's create several more smart masks, which we can use for our textures. Since most of these only work in cycles, make sure you're using cycles before continuing. Let's begin with creating a curvature map for our object. To make this, we'll need a geometry node and a color ramp. The geometry node provides loads of data for our object. And if I cycle through them, this is how they all look. Now, we'll only be using the pointiness value. So let's take that and plug it into our color ramp. If we tweak the color stops on a color ramp, we can add in a little bit more contrast on our curvature map. To adjust it a little more, let's take a gamma node, add it after the color ramp, and tweak the value until you're happy with the final result. Now this is what is called a curvature map, but we want to spice things up a little and add a little bit more variation. So let's add two more nodes, and in this case it's going to be a math node set to uh, multiply and a noise texture node. Now take our gamma output and multiply it with the noise texture. You can now change the noise texture values until you get a variation result with which you're happy. Second, let's create an edge mask. To create this we'll need a bevel node, a geometry node, a vector math node set to dot product and a map range node. To clarify, the dot product is the sum of the two vectors and the cosine angle between them. So if we plug in the bevel node, which effectively tries to bevel these sharp edges, and then we take the normal output from our geometry node here, and we combine them in our dot product node, it's going to look for the angle between these two vectors, which will be our edge mask. Since this results in a pretty faint map, we're going to use the map range node to tweak the result. So first of all, we need to flip it. So let's set the two min value in our map range to one and set the two max value in our map range to zero. Now let's play around with the values until you're happy with the result but in my case these are the values that I used. Like with the curvature map we want to make this look a little less perfect so we are going to add another map range node and a noise texture. Plug in the texture into the map range and plug the map range into the radius value of our bevel node. Now we can crank up the noise detail and roughness and tweak the two min and two max of our map range node to change up the edge mask roughness to our liking. The final mask we are going to create is the ambient occlusion mask. 
Now, for those of you who don't know, ambient occlusion is a shading technique used to calculate how exposed certain areas of a mesh are to ambient lighting. The less exposed they are, the darker they are, and the more exposed, the lighter they are. How can we do this in Blender? Let's add in an ambient occlusion node, color ramp, and another noise texture. Now let's plug the noise texture into our ambient occlusion color, and then take the color output for our ambient occlusion node and plug that into our color ramp. Now make sure to flip the color ramp. So click on the drop down and choose flip color ramp. So the white is on the left side and the black is on the right. Right. So we can now tweak the values and just drag them in wherever we want to get a result that we're happy with. I'm going to go for something like this. All right, so that concludes our smart material masks. Let's put them to good use so we can take our current texture to a higher level. We're going to add some more color variation to our base color. And we're going to do that with the use of two more mix RGB nodes. So let's take our ambient occlusion mask and plug that into the factor for both nodes. This one is going to be the top of our model. So let's copy our yellow color for this one. Hover over the original color swatch here. Hit Control C and move your mouse over to the new swatch. Now hit Control V to paste it. While you're at it, also paste it into the second color slot and then click it and make this color a more brownish or darker, whatever you like. Now, as you can see, we get a nice layer of dirt and grime on top of our original yellow color. So let's repeat these steps for the gray color. Copy the original gray color, paste it onto our new mix RGB node on both slots in this case. Select the bottom color and just make it a little bit darker than the original color was. Plug in the two mix RGBs into the original base color mix RGB and you should now get the original color split and the ambient occlusion dirt combined. Let's add our curvature into these by taking two more mix RGB nodes and plugging them between our original mix RGB and the ambient occlusion ones. In this case, we plug it into the AO color in the top slot of both nodes and we take the curvature and plug that into our factor. Now we have another mask to switch between the top color, which is the ambient occlusion color and a second color. In both cases, let's choose a lighter variant of the base colors. This will add nice highlights and variation to our color using the curvature map. Now, the final step for the base color is to add edge wire, which shows the object has been used. Now, this is supposed to be a metal crate, so exposed edges look like bare metal. This might be getting a bit repetitive, but let's add another mix RGB. Take our complete base color node and plug that into the top slot. Now, let's take the edge mask we created and plug this into the factor. Finally, select the color which works for a bare metal in the bottom slot. I'm going for a medium dark gray. All right, so we finished our base color. And if we now re-enable our principal BSDF by Control Shift clicking on it, you'll immediately see that we took our base color to a whole nother level. Oh my to really sell our material though, we'll need three more inputs, which are the metallic roughness and normal values of which the metallic will be the easiest to set up. So for the metallic, we can just take our edge mask and plug that directly into the metallic value. Now, all of our exposed edges actually look like metal, whereas the rest of the model keeps its rough painted look. For the roughness though, we'll need to do a little bit more. Add in two color ramps and mix RGB, and plug one ramp into the factor and one into the top color socket. Now plug the edge mask and take that into the top color ramp and take the ambient occlusion output and plug that into the bottom color ramp. For the top ramp, just take the white value and slide it to the left. For the ambient occlusion ramp, take the black value and make it a medium gray tint. Then take the white value and make it a very light gray color. This will make sure that no parts of our object are either completely reflective or completely rough, but instead they have light roughness variations which is more subtle and more real to look at. Now, finally, let's take the color of our mix RGB that's uh, still available and make it black or a dark gray color to make sure that the exposed edges of our metal are actually reflective. Now, why this works is that we now get a map which will make our edges the most reflective while making the areas where the dirt is, which we got from the ambient occlusion node, the most rough, which makes sense because dirt usually is a bit rougher looking than bare metal. So this works perfectly fine. I want to add one more layer of roughness into this though. So let's just add in another noise texture, another color ramp and another mix RGB node. Now let's take the noise texture and plug it into the color ramp and plug the color ramp into the bottom socket of our new mix RGB node. Let's 
take the roughness map that we just created with our two masks and plug it into the top socket of our new Minx RGB node. Now let's take this into our roughness value on our principled PSDF. And finally, let's make sure to tweak our noise value and also our color ramp until we get a nice result. Now I'm gonna change the factor here to a very low value, something like a 0.25 or so, just to make this added level of roughness variation a little bit more subtle. Overall, this will add way more realism combined with the map that we just created to get a perfect roughness map for our model. Perfect, we're almost done, hang in there. Just one final value to go. And that's the bump node or actually the normal value. So let's add in a bump node in which we are going to plug in our dirt because we want our dirt to have some depth, some bump. So we can take the ambient occlusion color ramp output and plug this into the height of our bump node. Now let's take our bump node and just plug it into the normal value of our principled PSDF. And we can now simply tweak the strength slider until we get a result which works. I think I'm gonna go for something like a 0.25 on the lower end of the spectrum just to make it nice and subtle. And we now have perfect bump for all of the dirt on our model. All right, so there you have it. This is our final shader. Now at the beginning, I mentioned this was going to be a smart material, just like the ones in Substance Painter, for example. Now, why is that? Well. If we edit our mesh now and we add in a few more insets and details, for example, you'll notice that our material automatically updates. So it incorporates such features. Basically, it's an adaptive material which even works on different meshes without having to change too much. And that sounds pretty smart to me. You can now create professional materials in Blender, but you'll also need to know how to render them out fast. And to do that, you'll want to check out this video right here. Oh, and as always, a massive thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel. Yeah.